Amen. 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 Now watch verse 20. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruit. Uh, oh, yeah. way. You can tell if a person is saved, you got to watch their life. Yes. I'm not against speaking in tongues. And I've said that many times. But I've seen too many people speak in tongues. Right. And wear fingernail polish. Yes. Yes. Wear jewelry. Amen. Yes. Somewhere, sister, wear pants now. Amen. Going to Church of God in Christ. And they speak in tongues more than anybody. Church of God in Christ. Amen. But on, on a roller coaster to the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. Believe in the Trinity. Yes. Believe in Christmas. Amen. Believe in Easter. Yes. Yes. Even have Easter egg hunts. Yes. Yes. Find Easter egg in the Bible. Yes. Yes. Don't look for it tonight now because we ain't got that much longer. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is in there. Yeah. All right. Now here, God said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now in verse 22, it deals with what they commonly call your salvation plan in the false church. All you got to do is confess Jesus as Lord, and you say, It takes more than confessing Jesus as Lord. You got to get water baptized, Amen. and then Amen. you got to live a holy, uh, sanctified life in this in this present world. Yes. I'll be that's found in Titus, yes. first chapter. Titus chapter two, and jump right in the verse. Eleven. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, which means a sinful life, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly when? In this present world. Now the present world uh, applies to the world that you live in at that particular time mm -hmm. or in this particular time which is the present world Amen. so here we see again in the instructions uh, that God has given his sanctified church now let's turn over to Romans 6 chapter we're going to wind down I'm trying to show you the importance of another method of the false Christianity and believing or making you believe that there's nothing you can do to be saved Yes. God did it all to Calvary. And you can't live right and nothing you can do. God did it all. No, that, that's not the scripture and right division. <coughs> Romans the sixth chapter. Yes. From verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God <coughs> forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin because we are under the dispensation of grace? He said, God forbid. Amen. Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Uh -huh. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. Wait. Amen. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism. That's why you got to be immersed in water. Amen. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk. Now when you come out that water, you're going to live different. Amen. Walk in the newness of life. Now, again, I want to get back to that baptism. Uh, that brother wrote me, and he said, uh, Paul baptized the eunuch, and when Paul baptized the eunuch, he didn't use the name of Jesus. Well, let's turn to Acts 8, chapter Now, here, we're going to use line upon line, precept on precept. Amen. First of all, it wasn't Paul who baptized the eunuch. Amen. It was Philip. Amen. So, we want to get him straight there. Now, if you turn to verse uh, Acts 8, 38. 
And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, he said Philip, he doesn't say what Philip baptized him in Jesus' name. But now let's back up to 816. Amen. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. If Philip baptized Samaritans in the name of the Lord Jesus, right. why wouldn't Philip baptize a eunuch in the name of the Lord Jesus? Amen. It's Amen. talking about the same salvation yes. plan. So here's what we're trying to explain. Even though sometimes the scripture may not say that he baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus, but if we research the scripture and find out he, he baptized Samaritans in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. you know he baptized the rest of the folk. Amen. In Jesus name, even though they don't specifically say so. Right. Yes. Now, yes. he also said about uh, the, the pastor has to baptize. Well, that's not quite right either. If you turn to Acts the 10th chapter, verse 30, 48. Now, Peter had preached to the people. Pick up verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Back up to verse 47. Can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? This is when Peter preached to the Gentiles. Should any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Uh-huh. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the he Lord. He commanded the Jews that was with him to baptize Cornelius and his household. Yes. He didn't do it, but he commanded Amen. his ministers Amen. to fulfill the obligation. Amen. So again, we see the importance of understanding that the pastor can delegate a minister or an elder or even evangelist mm 